Hi, this is Barbara Dillon with Fanbase Press. We are here once again at San Diego Comic Con 2023, and I'm here with the amazing Fred Kennedy. Fred, thanks for chatting with me. Thank you for letting me chat with you. <laughs> uh, Fred, we've chatted before on the Fanbase Weekly podcast, yeah. and we've talked about your incredible, critically acclaimed series, Dead Romans. Just in case our viewers have not been familiar with the series, what can you tell us about the premise? Um, it's centered around the Varian disaster, which was this massive battle in the Tudorberg Forest, and the worst defeat Rome ever suffered, and we took that dark, rainy, swamp-ridden bloodbath and put a love story in it. That's the best way to explain Dead Romans. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic, fantastic. And you were already at issue five, which is releasing exclusively through Shatterline Image. Um, for those who have been following along and loving the series, where do we find the story in issue five? Um, all the pieces are on the table. I'm a really big fan of they're, they're Akira Kurosawa, um, no, uh, Takahashi Maike, the way he tells stories, they tend to have these big, like, build up, build up, build up, build up, build up, and then there's this massive crescendo, and the entire end of the movie is this, you, you leave feeling exhausted, and that is what we do uh, with Dead Romans, so we just release the hounds, so to speak, in the very last few pages um, of issue five, but I really like the character development, because the, all the character arcs, for the most part, are really complete. Everyone knows who they are when they get to this point in the story, and there's some really good, calm, somber, reflective moments with the characters before this big bonanza at the end. And I'm really excited, and, and, and I, I know that it, every, every issue has gotten better. I really feel that every issue has gotten better, and Nick is way more confident with his art, and wait until issue six, especially the, the way Jose did the colors on the last few pages. It has this really ethereal, dreamlike quality. You're in for a real treat. I'm really excited about it. And Allison is amazing to work with as an editor. She's so good. We've already shouted them out, but uh, speaking of your very talented creative team, they're simply stellar. Yeah. Um, what do you want to say about the, the shared creative process of working through so many issues together? It's been awesome. Um, I'll be honest, like when we decided to bring on a colorist to speed up the process, Nick goes, he's like, oh, my buddy Jose will do the colors. And I'm like, oh, your buddy Jose. And then I don't know who Jose is. And then all of a sudden I'm getting an email from Jose Villarubia. And I'm like, oh, my God, that's your friend? And so anybody who reads comics knows that name, the amount of awards that guy's been nominated for, the, the, the repertoire, the, the catalog of work behind him. It's been incredible. And to get, like, pages from him and seeing what he's doing, along with Nick's art, like, what a powerhouse team that is for the visuals. I'm very, very, very fortunate to be working with the people I am. And I had a great conversation with Allison, our editor, about this today, about how much cleaner and complete the ending is. And some of those changes that we made were just me and her having coffee and her just making suggestions. Have you thought about this? What about this? Have you thought about taking it in this? And she's just a fantastic collaborator to work with. And I know that so often creators get very hesitant about working with an editor, but a great editor can really just take your work and make it so much better by helping you find a path, you know? So I'm very fortunate to have been working with the people that I've been working with. And the variant covers for issue six, uh, Miko Machajic, who I did one of my first indie books with, I've always loved his art. It's just, he's got such a style. And Jose did a variant for us, and Mike Del Mundo also did a cover for us. And I've been a huge fan of Mike Del Mundo forever. Uh, and so when he found out, he's like, oh, this is like your big image debut. He's like, I'll give you a really sweet deal. So he did. He's such a good human being. So all around, I've had just this incredibly positive experience, and I'm so grateful to tell that story with the people that I've been working with. It's been awesome. That's so, so oh. good. That's so yeah. good. Well, uh, as if that is not enough for one person to be working on, yeah. I also want to talk about your Star Wars fan-made audio drama, yeah. Mud 79. Uh, it's phenomenal. Thank you. <laughs> you have already put out season one, but you are currently remastering season one. Tell us about what that is. So when I did, I did season one, first of all, if anybody listens... When you listen to it, you'll probably be like, are you like lifting content from stuff that's been in the series lately? And I think I talked to you about this before. I swear someone 
at Disney was listening to this <laughs> because I feel like I have had a profound influ influence on the Star Wars universe. So when I did this originally, like three years ago, uh, as I like, I, I my day job is in broadcasting, and I was an audio producer for years. But there's a vast difference between audio production on commercials and advertisements and making this like cinematic soundscape. And I was kind of learning as I was going. And so when I finished the first season, I was never 100% satisfied with how it started. So I remastered and revoiced it. I gave it a better read. Uh, I was modeling myself after Scoop McNary's voiceover in uh, Narcos Mexico. In the very first episode of the first season, he's got this great little monologue. And it works because there's a visual, but when there's no visual to go along with that read, it sounds, it's too sad. It sounded too sad. So I revoiced it and... He's being way too harsh on himself. Yeah, but it's like, <laughs> when you watch, when you listen, yeah, it, okay. <laughs> but uh, so I decided I was going to do that. And before I relaunched the second season, which comes out at the end of August, I wanted to re-release weekly the whole first season with a brand new soundscape, brand new sound design. And the second season is 20 episodes, 40 minute, 45, 44, 45 minutes long each. Uh, and it's going to be dropping every Thursday until the middle of January. Oh. And I'm so excited for everyone to listen to it. If you haven't heard it, it is a Star Wars story. No authorization. It's totally fan-made. No one's making any money on it. We're all just huge Star Wars fans. You're in it, actually. I'm giving her a big <laughs> plug. Um, you play a great character, too. Uh, so the it's set five years after the Clone Wars and tells a story about this guy named Solomon Kwai, who is 16 years old and he's living on this backwater farming planet and he hates farming. He wanted to be a pro Limmy player, but he couldn't make it, he wasn't good enough, and he didn't want to be a mechanic. So him and his friends decide, let's, let's sign up, because to them, their planet was saved by the Republic five years earlier. Their family members fought for the Republic during the Clone War. So in this juvenile, oversimplified mindset that he has at the beginning of the story, He's like, it's just a different flag. So what's the problem? So they sign up and they join. And then as it moves along, he's in this unit. And all these people that he's with have these similar stories of they didn't have a lot of opportunities. And that's one of the first lines. If this upsets you, you grew up in a part of the galaxy with better opportunities than I did. And that's the setting of what happens and how he grows and learns. And it's on this planet that is slowly falling into a civil war because... A lot of the people don't want to join the Empire, but other people think, oh, well, this will stop the slave trade that's going on on the planet right now, so it should be good. And I wanted to tell a very gray story about little people. And I think that's what I love about Andor so much, is it's the little people. And it's the little people that are working behind the scenes diligently that make big things happen, and that's the setting. Uh, with Mud 79. I really went off there, didn't I? <laughs> it was amazing. And I, I have to underscore, this is phenomenal. Thank and you. not only the, the cast, the performances, but the sound design, yeah. the production is truly phenomenal. So you're in for a real treat when you start releasing the remastered season one. You're in yeah. for an even better treat for season two. And then season three, question mark? It's written. I know where I'm going. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm going to chip away at it but it's not going to come out for a bit but season two is going to fill your tummy you'll be you'll be good to go with season two i i like and i love the way it starts because season one the remastered versions are still coming out now so we're going to roll weekly there's going to be no break and i think that everybody who is listening for it for the first time is in for a real treat because the first season ended with utter chaos like utter chaos you don't know who's you don't really even know what's happening. You just know it's very bad. And then season two, the next scene, it, it all like rolls out and you get some resolution and some real development. And I'm really excited for everybody to listen to it. And I think that I, I did it and I want to stress that the reason I did it was because I think all of us as creators, we all have these stories we want to tell. And I find that a lot of us are waiting for the time to tell them. Like, I'll tell it when the time is right. And I, I started working on this during the pandemic, and I had this moment of, I, I don't know if I'll ever get to write an official Star Wars story. That's, the, that's not me being negative. That's just the reality of the situation, because so many people want to. But there's nothing stopping me from just doing this now my own way. Like, my own, my own audio story that you can just 
put on and plug in and just drift away to a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Fred, for those who want to check out not only Mud 79, yeah. but Dead Romans as well, First, we'll start with Dead Romans. Yeah. What is the best way to pick up their copies? Their locally owned comic book retailer would be the best way to go. Uh, you can also follow me on social media at fearless underscore Fred on Instagram and Twitter. I'm posting all kinds of links about where to get it there. So every time there's uh, the pre-orders and all that stuff are available, um, I make sure everybody knows where to go to get it. There are some interesting announcements with Dead Romans that should be coming up soon that I can't really talk about, but there's some cool stuff happening. Um, and uh, Mud79, I it, it's on the Curious Cast Network, and I'm always posting links and all that stuff as well. And in fact, in my bio on both Twitter and Instagram is a direct link right to it. So you can go right there and find it all. Fred, it's so lovely. First to meet you in person. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. <laughs> I've, I've, I was really excited to do this one. I've, I've said before we started rolling, I'm, I'm a huge fan of what you guys do. I think you're... You're very slick and you do a fantastic job. It's great. You're very kind. And I share most of your opinions, so it's awesome. It's even better. <laughs> we share the same opinions on things, which is great. We do. Yeah. And we both love Star Wars. Yes. A whole bunch. Oh, yeah. my God. I love it so much. <laughs> it's weird. I've met a few people, like comic book creators and stuff, that I've never met in person before. And I'm not lying. At least three times over the past few days, it's talking about Star Wars that has really sparked the conversation with everybody in the room. Yes. Everybody gets so passionate about it, and yeah. I, I think uh, that it's one of the best franchises ever. I, I just love it so much. Agreed. It's Agreed. My first, it's my first love. It really is. <laughs> Don't let my wife see that, but it's my first love. It really is. <laughs> well, Fred, again, lovely to meet you. Great to chat with you. Thank you for sharing information about Dead Romans, about Mud 79. And folks, please be sure to check out the series. Please be sure to check out the audio drama. Yeah. Yes. But again, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Of course. And viewers, you can find more interviews like this one at fanbasepress.com. And we hope that you are enjoying our convention coverage. Thank you.